Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our special coverage of the 22nd general election in South Korea. Today, Koreans are heading to the polls to determine the composition of the 300-member National Assembly. The outcome will impact the UN administration's relationships with key allies such as the U.S. and Japan, as well as shape how lawmakers address critical internal challenges such as the low birth rate, an aging population, record inflation, and a medical standoff over med school admission quotas. Let's start by taking a look at what the polling stations around the country look like right now. Our reporter Moon Hedeon is at one of the polling stations in the capital's Seoul. Hedeon, where are you right now and how busy is the election site you're at right now? Right, good afternoon, Yen. I'm currently standing in front of a polling station here in Taeyongdong in northern Seoul's Gwangjinggu district. And we're currently around halfway through the, today's voting. Now, the voting started at 6 a.m. today across over 14,000 polling stations around the country and is due to run for 12 hours until 6 p.m. Now, I've been standing here since early morning today and there's been a steady stream of people heading into the ballots for a new 300-member National Assembly. The early voting that took place over two days last Friday and Saturday resulted in the highest voter turnout in history for the general election's early voting. Now, eyes are on whether this trend will continue today. In order to vote today, voters need to bring a form of identification such as a passport, driver's license or an ID card. Voters who want to upload photos to show that they voted can only take photos at the entrance of the polling station or outside the building and are strictly prohibited from taking photos of their ballot paper. Hedeon, these voting procedures seem standard. Is there anything that's different this year compared to the previous general election back in 2020? Right, yeah, and so one notable feature at the polling stations this year is the length of the ballot paper that voters will be casting their votes on um, in the booths like the one uh, behind me. And that's because this year the ballot paper for proportional representation seats is 51.7 centimeters long with 38 parties running, making it the longest ever used in Korea. It's longer than the last general election in 2020 when the ballot paper was over 48 centimeters long with 35 five parties running. Other than that, it's worth noting that the voters this year are also looking a little different than the previous general election four years ago due to the country's aging population. It's the first time ever that the number of voters above the age of 60 has surpassed that of those in their 20s and 30s, dubbing this year's general election a grey election. According to the National Election Commission, those in their 20s and 30s made up just over 28% of voters, while those aged over six years old accounted for nearly 32 percent. Now that's all I have at this hour. Back to you, Yen. Thank you. That was Munerian reporting live from a polling station in Gwangjinggu district in Seoul. Today's election will impact the remainder of the UN administration's term. The distribution of seats among parties will determine the trajectory of budget bills and legislation. Our political correspondent Shin Ayong provides insights into key differences and things to look out for in this year's elections. After about two weeks of competitive election campaigns, all that remains is the people's choice. The April election comes almost two years after conservative President Yoon suk yeols victory in the 2022 presidential election, where he narrowly defeated Democratic Party's candidate Lee Jae-myung by a margin of 0.73 percent, the smallest margin in South Korean history. For this year's election, the number of seats for elected lawmakers has increased to 254 from 253, with one seat taken from the proportional representation bloc, which dropped to 46 from 47, keeping the total number of lawmakers at the National Assembly at 300. Winning at least 150 of the 300 seats grants the party the power to pass budget bills and various laws. Any party that secures three-fifths or more of the National Assembly members, meaning 180 seats or more, will have strong legislative power, including the ability to fast-track bills. In the 2020 general election, the DP and its satellite party won 180 seats, resulting in a minority government with the UN administration taking office. Obtaining over two-thirds, which is at least 200 National Assembly seats, further strengthens authority, allowing for constitutional amendments, dismissal of legislators, and even the ability to initiate presidential impeachment. As the UN administration enters its third year in office, 
The DP is determined to maintain its dominance to act as a counterbalance to the ruling party and the UN administration. For the ruling People Power Party, this year's race is considered crucial because failing to secure a majority could potentially render President Yoon sung yeol a lame dog for the remainder of his term. Eyes are now on how the April election will reshape the political landscape for the next four years, including the remainder of the UN administration's term. Shin ha Arirang News. The voter turnout rate is climbing as we're speaking. Let's now turn to An Song Jin, joining us live from the National Election Commission to give us the latest on how many Koreans have been casting their ballots today. Good afternoon, Ye and I'm standing at the National Election Commission Monitoring Center, and what we can currently see behind me is the real-time voter turnout rate. Now, the voting has started at 6 a.m. this morning, and as of 12 p.m., the figure was at 18.5 percent, which is 0.9 percentage points lower than at the same time in the 2020 election. You can see from the graph that the hourly voter turnout has been gradually increasing, starting from 1.8 percent at 7 a.m. We are still slightly below the figure from the previous election. However, the total number of voters is expected to increase once the early voter turnout is incorporated into these figures. During the two days of voting on Friday and Saturday, the early voting saw the highest turnout rate in South Korea's general election history, with over 31 percent of all eligible voters in the country casting their ballots. With the record high early voter turn rate, turnout rate and a high number of easily mobilized groups such as those in their 20s and 30s, eyes are on whether the voter turnout will exceed 70 percent for the first time in 32 years. The voter turnout rate has reached double digits for all parts of the country. Out of the key areas of attention, Daegu Metropolitan City has the highest turnout rate with 20.4 percent. Song Jin, our viewers might be wondering why the turnout only hovers at around 18 percent, but in less than an hour at 1 p.m., we are expecting to see this relatively low figure soar up because the National Election Commission says they will be combining the turnout rates from early voters and overseas Koreans who cast their ballots a few weeks back. The NEC has been fueling efforts to ensure a safe, transparent election. And given that you are there at the site, what are officials doing differently this time around? Absolutely. So starting from this election, the NEC has reduced the risk of any machine errors by adding another double-checking procedure where ballots which have gone through the machine are once again checked one by one manually. They have also separated the network system between the NEC website and the election system, which present, prevents the election results from the system being tampered with even if the website is hacked. With six hours left till the closing closes, results for this general election will not be announced until late at night or even early tomorrow morning. That's all I have for the voter turnout rates at the moment. Back to you, Yeon. All right, Song Jin, do keep us updated. That was An Song Jin reporting live from the National Election Commission. As mentioned before, there are some notable differences for this year's elections. Pei touches upon some of the interesting factors of this race based on the numbers. The general election is South Korea's biggest political event this year. You might be wondering how it works and what's different in 2024. Let's take a look at the election by the numbers. The voting age in South Korea is 18 after the country lowered the age limit from 19 in December 2019. Citizens born before April 11, 2006 are eligible to vote in this year's general election. This means more than 44 million Koreans will be heading to almost 15,000 polling stations across the country that will be open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. There, voters will receive two ballot papers. One is to vote for a candidate running for their constituency, and the other is to vote for the party they support for proportional representation seats. This year, the ballot papers for proportional representation seats are the longest ever used in Korea. It's 51.7 centimeters long, as 38 parties have registered to battle over these seats. This is even longer than the last election in 2020, when the ballot paper was over 48 centimeters long, with 35 parties running. Before that, in 2016 and in 2012, the papers were about 30 centimeters. Just as in the 2020 election, the votes will have to be counted by hand, as electronic counters cannot read papers this long. Moving on to the candidates running for individual districts, the average competition rate stands at around 2.8 to 1 this year, the lowest in 39 years. In 2020, the rate was 4.4 to 1. 
Of the 699 candidates that are registered in 254 districts nationwide, 86% are men, leaving women as an unrepresentative minority. The average age of the candidates is 56.8, two years older than in 2020. Those in their 50s took up nearly half of the candidates, followed by those in their 60s and 40s. The youngest candidate is 28 years old, whereas the oldest is 85, born in 1938. By job, 65% of the candidates were professional politicians, 8% were attorneys, and 5% were professors or educators. Doctors and pharmacists accounted for about 1% of the total. The vote count for this year's election is expected to take about two more hours than usual and will likely have the final results at around 2 a.m. the next day. Before we end off, let's turn to my colleague Kim bo -kyung and professor of law at Hongik University Choi gi -kyung to better forecast and analyze how today's election results could shape Korea's socio-political landscape. bo -kyung, I'd like to ask you the first question. What is each party's forecast for today and what regions seem to be the most contentious at the moment? Well, yeah, in general elections are usually really hard to predict because unlike presidential elections where voters from across the country uh, choose from the same list of candidates in general elections, parties from different candidates depending on the region. So it is really hard to predict, but still based on current data, two major parties, the ruling PPP and the main opposition Democratic Party did come up with some projections. Uh, as we know, out of a total of 300 seats at the National Assembly, 254 are constituencies and the remaining 46 are selected by proportional representation. Regarding the number of constituencies, the People Power Party forecasts safe victories in around 90 districts while the opposition Democratic Party is expecting to win in 110 districts. Both parties are eyeing more than 50 districts to be highly competitive ones based on the fact that these are regions where polls show support for the two major parties within three to four percentage points of each other. The ruling PPP sees 55 districts as swing districts while the DP predicts a tight race in 50. The most contested battleground is the greater Seoul region, including Seoul, Gyeonggi, the province, and Incheon city. A total of 122 seats are up for grabs, and the DP sees 20 as Sweden districts, 10 each in Seoul and Gyeonggi, the province, while the People Power Party says 26 districts are too close to call, 15 in Seoul and 11 in Gyeonggi, the province. Now, the so-called PK region, the Busan, Ulsan, and uh, Gyeongsang Namda province, where 40 seats are at stakes, is also an area both, uh, where both of the parties are putting all our efforts to secure the seats. The DP believes 15 seats in the PK region to be a swing seat, while the PPP believes 13 are. Uh, when it comes to proportional representation slots, the People Future Party, the really party's satellite party is expected to win 18 seats and the Minji Union party, the main opposition satellite party, is expected to win 12 seats. And something worth taking a look at is actually uh, whether the Rebuilding Korea party, which is a new liberal party established by the former Justice Minister Cho Guk, will be able to win at least 10 seats as it expects. Right, we'll only have to see because only six hours have passed since elections have begun today. But Professor Cho, in the meantime, what is your forecast for today's parliamentary elections? And what do you think this time around? What is the significance for today's elections? Well, remembering that this is a midterm general election with uh, three more years to go in presidential term, uh, not just, just in Korea, but uh, in other countries as well. Midterm elections generally take on this character of uh, passing a, an assessment, essentially a report card uh, for the incumbent government. And unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of issues, particularly in uh, recent months, that I think have uh, raised people's ire in terms of you know making them very unhappy. It began uh, with the... Uh, I guess the botched investigation into the death of the Marine uh, uh, Corps, uh, who, whose investigation um, has been essentially stalled, and the uh, sending of the responsible general as, a, as the ambassador to Australia, and there was this um, the, the Green Onion or Spring Onion uh, debacle, and. Uh, 
you know, back in February, I think the ruling party actually had very good chances of being able to win the majority in the National Assembly. But the tide has somewhat turned. And uh, as um, reporter Po Kyung has mentioned, the appearance of uh, the, the reform or new, new National Bu Nation Building Party, sorry, Choguk Party, uh, that has a really sort of um, uh, put sail in wind in the sail of the Minju Party. I think without the, the this new Choguk Party, the uh, Democratic Party might not have had great expectations uh, in terms of the outcome. But thanks to that appearance, even the the PK region, which is generally very conservative region, uh, is being hotly contested in 15 seats. And so, uh, with the contested seats also in the Seoul region, it's more than likely that the uh, the Democratic party will retain the majority. The big question is by how many more seats. Mm -hmm, exactly. As you mentioned, this election seems to be a report card coming in midterm. And that's why a lot of people believe that the majority would be taken by the DP. And Po Gyeong, what does that mean based on how many seats they have? What type of scenarios would we be able to forecast? Right. The reason why it is important to see how many seats Democratic uh, Party takes at the National Assembly is because of the extent of power they can have depending on the number of seats. Uh, as we have seen in Hyun's report earlier, uh, the, if the main opposition, DP and other liberal uh, parties, secure over 150 seats or half the seats in the National Assembly, it would be able to solely pass budget bills and laws. And if it takes more than 180 seats, it can designate fast-track bills. And if it holds more than 200, it can amend constitutions, dismiss legislators, impeach the president, and nullify the president's veto. Uh, this is the very reason Han dong uh, the ruling People Power Party leader, said the liberal uh, opposition parties winning as many as two-thirds of the seats would let the leaders of the opposition, the DP leader Lee Jae-myung and uh, rebuilding Korea parties Cho Guk, uh, abuse their power to protect themselves from taking accountability uh, for criminal convictions. And as for President Yoon's veto power, since taking office, President Yoon has vetoed nine bills passed by the National Assembly over 21 months. The bills that have been vetoed include two special prosecution acts which investigate First Lady uh, Kim Gonyi's alleged stock price manipulation and bribery suspicions on a development project in Daejeongdong, Songnam, Gyeonggi province. If liberal opposition parties take up two-thirds of the assembly, they will be empowered to nullify presidential veto as they can pass a bill again by re-approving it. And regarding the impeachment of a uh, sitting president, is this is actually highly unlikely because it requires constitutional court's uh, decision. But still, these are the reasons why the ruling PPP has been intensifying efforts to appeal to the voters, saying the opposition bloc securing more than 200 seats must be prevented. Right, but since 1973, there hasn't been a single instance of a political party securing more than two-thirds of the National Assembly. Now, I would like to take a look at another scenario. Let's mm -hmm. say the PPP does take the majority. Right. What type of scenario will we be seeing and instead of President Yoon becoming a lame duck then how would his administration be fostering power? Well if PPP does uh, manage to overcome all those hurdles and take majority in the National Assembly I think we can certainly see Han Dong-hoon's status becoming much more important within the party uh, he will be become a most likely candidate for the next presidential election potentially uh, that's a political scenario. In terms of legislative agenda, I think the uh, People's Power Party might finally be able to carry out some of the, uh, the pledges that were made by the president during his campaign, such as getting rid of the gender equality ministry, which they hadn't been able to do because they were, didn't have the majority to pass the law. Uh, there, are, there are other things like restoring the prosecution's uh, power, which I think the president is also keen, keen to do. But I also looked at uh, PPP's pledges that they have made for the general election, and there are 10 major pledges that are listed um, 
and a lot of them focus on uh, trying to improve the low birth rate that we uh, are suffering from. So things like uh, giving parents compulsory parental leave, particularly for fathers, so that they actually take paternity leave. Also providing more support for child rearing. Uh, there are also lots of promises made for senior citizens, such as uh, providing uh, care and covering it with national health insurance, rather than leaving it just to private citizens. And so a lot of people actually uh, end up having to, uh, well, not being able to afford the care that they need. But the problem with these pledges is that there is no sort of details on how they're going to be funded. And so uh, if they do want to implement these uh, legislatively, they will need to work out the budget. So we can see some movements on those fronts, I think. Better allocation of the budget seems to be key. And I could tell that we're focusing more on the domestic front rather than on the diplomacy or external affairs. Now, Pugyeong, there are some variables that we should keep in mind, though, regardless of the results. Could you walk us through what they are? Right. Well, I would say there are two. The first one is voter turnout. Mm -hmm. As we already know, early voting turnout reached the record 31 0.28%, and this marks the very first time uh, the early voting turnout for general elections surpassed 30% mark since the country introduced the early voting system in 2014. Uh, naturally, there are high expectations for the final voter turnout to be higher than in the past. Usually, high voting, high early voting turnout worked in favor of the liberals, but we need to note that the last presidential election broke that trend, with the PPP's Yoon having beaten DP candidate Lee Jae-myung at that time, despite record early voting turnout. Also, some experts say if voter turnout surpasses 70 percent, which has never been surpassed before for general elections, it could mean so-called shy conservatives uh, came out to vote as they considered the chance of a favorable outcome for liberals. So we'll have to see how that goes as well. Now, another variable is how male voters in their 20s and their 60s vote as they have emerged as pivotal uh, voters. During the presidential election in 2022, uh, they showed strong support for the People Power Party's uh, Yoon Sagir candidate at the time. Uh, a recent survey suggests, however, uh, that male voters in their 20s are gradually leaning away from the party, while male voters in their 60s were traditionally are considered as conservatives are showing more support for liberals. So victory could come down to how these voters vote. Right, we are seeing a difference this time around, but regardless of whether we see a conservative or progressive National Assembly, Professor, what are some key policy or legislation that lawmakers must tackle? Well, there are some issues that they tried to tackle earlier, but really got nowhere, and those include things like education reform and pension reform, uh, as well as better immigration policy, and also uh, there is really not much being said about the environment. We are already experiencing some uh, very unusual climate this year, and farmers are already concerned that the uh, harvest will not be, uh, you know, as what they expect in normal years. And so, better uh, plans and out policies regarding those issues really need to be looked at urgently by the lawmakers. And you mentioned uh, the diplomatic front, and there are are things that uh, the president and also the lawmakers need to do to try to improve particularly our relations with our biggest trading partner which is China and so I think those are issues that I would like the lawmakers to uh, turn their attention to. They're all critical issues that demand much attention. Now in the meantime thank you so much for your analysis and your expert analysis today as well. Thank you. Thank you.
대도시가 아닌 지역에 어, 거주하는 제일 국민들은 투표 하나를 하기 위해서 큰돈 혹은 시간을 써서 그 투표소에 가서 이제 투, 투표를 해야 하는 고충이 있습니다. 투표소가 더 많이 만, 만들어졌으면 좋겠다라는 생각을 하고 어, 또한 제 국민이 투표를 하려면 사전 신청을 해야 되는데 이러한 면들이 더 많이 홍보가 되었으면 좋겠습니다. 한국에서 합법적으로 외국인 근로자로 취업할 수 있는 법적 근거를 만들어 주시면 좋겠습니다. 또한 이주 여성들이 조금 더 전문적인 일자리에 예를 들어 심리상담사, 이주 여성 동료 심리상담사 같은 일자리에 진출할 수 있는 기반을 만들어 주시면 좋겠습니다. That's all for our noon coverage of Korea's 22nd general election. Join us again at 5.55 p.m. local time for more updates and analysis, including exit poll results on this significant event in our country's political calendar.